All right, folks, welcome back. It's uh, Wednesday, April 8th. It's going on about 6.30 p.m. Uh, saw it fit to take a little break and uh, do a little video. You're looking at the uh, last load of yard manure going out to that field. The headlands are completely done. Understand, I was kind of at a, I was kind of shut down for a little bit we received a very good amount of rain here lately and uh it's just now suitable to go ahead and continue to run manure <clears throat> tell you what before going any further and keep jibber jabbering <laughs> i want to let everybody know right now that there will be a special guest appearance for this coming friday's show it out friday a uh, special guest is a fellow farming YouTuber. Uh, this is basically the first time I've ever done anything like this. You know, kind of brought somebody in and everything else. But, uh, you know, this is all about having some fun and uh, coming together and all that other stuff. So, yeah, Friday, special guest appearance by a fellow farming YouTuber. Uh, pretty excited about it. We're going to make it fun, have a couple of laughs, do a little bit of talking about this coming year. Uh, and obviously there's some, uh, there's some channels to show it out respectfully and, uh, yeah, all's well. So yeah, last load of yard manure that can go out on this year's sorghum field. It's all covered. I got the headlands. Uh, there's one little strip that I, uh, that deserves a uh, load of manure and then that's it. All that's left out there for space is a uh, what, what we call, or what I call, a little spade, which uh, I need to keep open because uh, <coughs> tomorrow I'm going to get both tractors out there. And as you know, I had to stockpile some manure, a uh, fair amount of it, this winter because the snow was just too deep, couldn't spread it, and plus you're not really supposed to be doing that stuff. Whatever. Um, so anyway, I'm leaving that spade left to, uh, for ground to cover for what I have to pick up from this winter's uh, stockpiling, which uh, really isn't too bad. You know, it's amazing. It's what comes out of the barn, the barn cleaner comes out, you know, it's brought in out there real loose. And then of course it's spread into just one pile. Well, you know, it mashing down through the winter and of course animals are in there, turkeys and everything else picking through it. It's amazing what's not there anymore, but uh, I, can, I can promise you there's multiple, multiple loads which are needed to uh, fill in that spade, and then that's it for that field. Unfortunately, we need a lot of help here uh, with some good sunshine, which we do have coming in this continued breeze. Um, it just died down enough to, where, to make a video. I don't think it's affecting the audio. Um, unfortunately, my other two pieces of ground that merit uh, uh, manure spreading are way too wet yet. Way too wet. What am I going to do? I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right, folks. Uh, Christmas came a little early this year. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. I went and got this yesterday. This is a John Deere Model 960 18 foot field cultivator. I will explain this here in a minute. Not that I need to uh, justify myself to you, as disrespectful as that sounded. I'm just going to explain to you what the hell I'm doing. I've been mauling this over, planning for this and everything else for about six months now. In the last four or five months, I've let about three or four of them slip through my fingers out of procrastination. I tried dealing on one of the pieces and <coughs> it was gone. Uh, that's all on me. But I tell you what, uh, let's use the old famous saying, things happen for a reason, I guess. All that malarkey happened because of this thing right here. 
Uh, I'm very pleased, very pleased. This thing has been babied. What's the year on this? I don't know. I can't tell you that. But I'm here to tell you, I even think that it was shedded. I almost guarantee it was. Um, beautiful shape. Exceptional shape. It's exactly what I was looking for. I almost pulled the plug on a couple of 22s. I think that's a little too excessive for my 6150M. In fact, I don't want to say it, but we're going to see how it pulls this, the 18-footer. I've been assured multiple times, no problem. But, uh, yeah, great unit, uh, great price. Uh, I, I, I almost felt a little bit ashamed um, because of the price tag on it. But that's kind of the way things are these days. Um, yeah, this has been in the planning stages for about six months now. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you my, my rationale here. Uh, one of the things I did is I left the, uh, <coughs> the equipment dealer at the store with 20 new shovels. Those are those 7.3s and uh, 20 brand new uh, poly protectors, shank savers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I, I can't talk too tough about cultivators here. This I've never had any dealings with them. Why you wouldn't put these shank savers, poly protectors on is beyond me. I mean, they're, they're, they're cheap as all, you know, dog snot for crying out loud. So anyway, what I did here, my way of thinking is, and understand here, the shovels that were on here, these things are in phenomenal shape. They're in great shape. My way of thinking here is, uh, me and my simple mind, is I tackled the first three rows, which is a combination of 20, for the initial breakup. So then, therefore, it's not too terribly hard on the, uh, the back couple few rows. And, uh, yeah, pretty happy. I should have taken a video on this earlier this afternoon before I started with manure. Um, understand I've been working on this since I brought it home yesterday. Not a lot of work was needed, but uh, of course changing out the shovels, the, uh, the poly protectors, whatever the hell you want to call them. Cleaning it up a little bit, a grease job, not that I think there's maybe eight zerts on this thing. Uh, going over the whole thing with a fine tooth comb. Uh, every nut, every bolt, making sure things are tight. Uh, this back end here, th this is an extremely heavy back end piece of equipment. In fact, I got to figure something out because this is this is just not going to cut it. Um, <coughs> as you can see, that was split broke right in half, and I'm sure there's a lot of those that are broke right in half. Um, we doctored that up and welded it. I had to make some grinds on the weld so it'd properly fit. And, uh, of course, I had to take the whole thing apart, but no big deal. The problem is, is I dare call this almost a two-man operation to hook the stinking thing up. Now, that, that, that can't be. Um, so I got to come up with something. Maybe a... Uh, you know, a retractable, whatever the word is, back end ordeal. I don't know. I do know that I'm not going to take out a darn bottle jack every stinking time I need to hook the thing up. But uh, great shape, great condition. Uh, of course, you're going to see tire marks. That's that's a given. Um, yeah, I had it hooked up and it worked beautifully. Folded and unfolded beautifully and up and down. I also need to, I'm going to get something... Uh, I am not going to deal with this piece of angle iron and zip ties every time I want to stow this away. Ain't doing it. Um, but I also seen this shutoff here. Um, rotate fully to lock. I don't know if that's telling me if I shut that off, it'll stay in that position where I don't need to monkey around with those. I don't know. <coughs> I just, I don't know. I need to play around with it just a little bit more, but uh, 
yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. So, okay, what's my explanation on this thing? What the hell am I doing with this? Um, all right, this is going to make some of you laugh. This is going to make so sense to some of you. <laughs> this is my science. A number one, this farm, I must stop deep tillage. Period. <laughs> Between moldboard plowing and my chisel plow, which if this works out correctly, now nah, I'll hang on to that chisel plow. I won't sell that thing. That thing's fit for a king. Um, the deep tillage must stop. Number one, turning over these fields. You know, like this year's sorghum field, this is going to be year number four of turning that over. I can't continue to go in there. I mean, I guess I could. That's what we've always done. And continue to go in there and moldboard plow that or chisel plow that. So number one, I guess we're going to say is soil health. A lot of you right now are probably going to say, well, soil health, Ben, it's called, uh, it's called no-till. I'm not there yet, folks. I, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm not there yet, okay? This has always been a tilling farm, and I'm going to stop there. Okay, the other reason is, is uh, let's get out of that wind a little bit here. This area actually was just cleaned up as crappy as it looks. Oh, that wind picked up again, but that's a good thing. Of course, this is where my uh, little makeshift bale yard is in the winter, my stockpile yard. And uh, of course, it was just full of, uh, you know, little it's and bits of uh, film wrap and some net wrap and stuff frozen to the ground. So yeah, I kind of got that all cleaned up. So let's go in the barn here for a second. The other thing is, is, you know, even though, I got to find my right words here. Actually, I don't care. We're just having a common person's talk. The deep tillage has to stop, but yet the soil earth must be scarred. If you can make that make any sense. Well, with that cultivator, I only intend to go down about three inches. I've been told lots of people are about two and a half to three and a half. I'm going to start at three. I'm going to see how it works. You need to understand we have tremendous rocky land here. Some of it is God awful. Um, you guys remember that one field that went into my primary sorghum last year? Uh, what, what do we call it? The devil's backyard, devil's playground. Um, <laughs> I'm cringing thinking that I have to turn that over again, which I have to and I'm going to. That's going to go into uh, new seeding alfalfa mother cropped by uh, peas and oats. The way things are going this year, this continues. I'll get two crops off of there too, peas and oats. That'd be fantastic. Uh, okay, I'm getting off track here. Another big contributor here to this decision with the field cultivator is picking stones. We're littered with stones up here. I cannot get stone pickers, period. Now there's a crew I can call on, but they're only available after their 10 hour shift is over. I'm very thankful and lucky for that. I will be calling on them this year. In fact, they're all looking forward to it. I don't have a crew of high school kids that I can call on anymore. I thought I had a crew last year. They came once for about a, a $40 paycheck because you know we put in about a four hour night. It's 10 bucks an hour. I never seen them again. Couldn't get a hold of them. They're busy. Oh, I'm going with lifting weights tonight. Uh, I'm going camping this weekend. It's Thursday, what are you talking about? Well, I need to prepare and pack. All right, mom and dad must have uh, enough $20 bills that you don't care about coming picking rocks. Hell with you, you're never getting called again by me. Oh, I'm going on a tangent. I don't have people I can call on on any given moment. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not completely ignorant here. Yes, there is a tremendous amount of good, younger generation that is willing to work and willing to work hard and make an extra buck or two or three. 
the thing of it is, is <laughs> those, they're all, they already have jobs around here. They're already, they're already taken up by people that can, uh, you know, give them the hours that they're wanting and looking for a week. I can't do that. It's sporadic, you know. So yeah, the the days uh, this this world has changed. You, you, I don't have a list of fifteen rock pickers that I can call and come up with three, four, or five of them on any given night. Can't do it. Whether you agree with that or not, that is reality. So that was another contributor. Another thing to hear is if this actually works. See, this is my tillage equipment here, folks. This is my plan, even though this is a little. Uh, this is very untraditional, my way of thinking here. That's to scar the ground. My goal here, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, it's a three pass operation. One pass with the cultivator, hopefully one pass with the, uh, the disc, and then a pass with the uh, culti mulcher. The other thing here is if this actually works, which it's going to, it's 18 feet at a crack. 18 feet. You know what kind of a time saver that is for me? I hate to be using the excuse of, well, it's going to save me time. I generally, I, you know, I don't like that. But in this case, you know, especially with this possible property that's coming up that I haven't been talking about much. Um... And I'm actually going to stop there. Um, I'm going to stop altogether. So that's my uh, simple way of thinking. I guess while well, we're in here real quick here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this pen's being abided by again. Uh, they broke out of that one uh, about three mornings ago. And uh, these three turkeys were all laying over here. And a couple of them, these uh, feed mangers. So, for simplicity reasons, I just opened up this door and they're back in here. Uh, got a complete and full barn cleaning going on tomorrow morning, running the barn cleaner. As you can see, it's about time. It'll be a day number three. Um, everybody's doing real good. Uh, 3002, remember that was the devil bull that got castrated? Well, he purely just is the devil. It didn't leave his system. He got it back. He is a... Uh, He's a jerk, but uh, no worries. He's gonna go bye bye here in a little bit. The bulls continue to do real good. Um, they do need to get moved here at some point. Uh, one thing at a time here, folks, that the year and weather and ground is just starting to change here. I'm getting antsy too, but uh, one thing at a time. Uh, we're going after big boy tomorrow. Being that there's changes out in the yard and lot now, there's certain times of the day. Anyway, long story short, big guy's getting collected tomorrow, and he's actually going to go in the maternity pen. So looking forward to that. The next step is getting the little guy, the smaller bull, and uh, getting him out of there. It's way, way past time. I know. Do what you can do. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy and proud. I'm very satisfied with uh, how this ended out. I was crying the blues there a couple of months ago. You know, I really haven't talked about this much because I wasn't sure if I was going to pull the plug on this or not. But uh, things, I guess, just do happen for a reason because uh, three out of the other four cultivators that I missed, they slipped through my hands, weren't near this condition. So I'm very happy about that. Um, that's all I can say. I do not plan on changing out the other shovels. They're beautiful. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to tear anything else more apart to put, down those, uh, put in those uh, shank protectors. Uh, I'm going to run it as is. There's really nothing else more that needs to be done to this except for a true test, which I do want to do before the real brunt of, uh, you know, tillage starts. 
and I'll be sure to take you with me. I want to go into the field, especially if this continues, <clears throat> and get a feel for it and basically get my depth, which, uh, you know, there's a gizmo on here that I, I have to learn personally yet. Uh, of course, it's this guy here. And, uh, you know, when this goes down, this hits what I'm going to call this stopper here. So, yeah, I, we, long story short, we just, we got to play with it a little bit and figure it out. And uh, we're going to do a nice test run on it. And my goal here is about a three inch depth or so, or whatever is needed to properly scar the earth and uh, bring up some soil. Oh, it, folks. The year is definitely changing here. I know you can't hear it <clears throat> on this video, but down there, some really low lying land. Uh, and in fact, uh, a little lake even starts up down there. There were some ducks in there the other night. I bet you could hear that. Anyway, a bunch of frogs down there course the deer out uh, pasture system is uh, coming leaps and bounds you can see that nice little tint of green um, my god I, I, I hope this really dries out quick so I can hurry up and get a big shot of fertilizer on the entire pasture system try and help it along and uh, yeah of course you know where we are here um, just outside the barn what we call the cow yard I don't know if you can see it, but you can still see all my mountains of manure. That is yet to come out. I am not even close to being half done. And then, of course, I need to clean all this up here, too. This was a big lane pad that I, I put down for the cows. I'm sure you've seen that. And then at some point, sooner than later, i got to clean out what uh, I'm going to call the unstock lot, which there is a plan in place, 22 minutes. Gosh darn it. There is a plan in place for the next sales, uh, one I'm hitting, and I will uh, fill you in on that tomorrow with a video of uh, something. I'll tell you what I'm doing with the animals. Hell or high water, they gotta go. Hopefully a miracle happens with the, uh, the market in the meantime, but it won't. It's time for the farm to have a paycheck. Uh, it's time to empty the lot. <clears throat> or at least a good amount empty. It's time to get it cleaned because I need to make room and prepare for custom raising Holstein heifers. We'll go from there. I gotta get going, folks. I need to spread this last load here and then I gotta pick a couple odd jobs uh, to go into uh, dark and uh, we'll go from there. We'll talk to you sooner and later.